Okay, this is going to be a review on the MacBook Pro 2011 GPU issue that is causing a great amount of headache and problems for people who have the 2011. Okay, so um, on the left side, I have the understanding and debugging the kernel panics. Okay, on a Mac or an Apple computer, uh, kernel panic is the equivalent of the blue screen of death on a PC. Now, if you pay attention to this still over here, and I'm going to be moving it such like this. I'm going to be moving up and down because there's pictures out here on, uh, on Google that highlight what I want to say in this video and why I need you to stay away from the 2011 um, MacBook Pro line. Okay, so what you have here is a graphics card. In the 2011, uh, you had uh, two graphics cards. Graphics card. Now, what you see here is what is called rebotting. Let me say that again, reballing. And all reballing is, is that you take a heat gun and you heat up the graphics processor unit or the GPU. So the theory went that because of the weight and size and the microelectronics and the transient voltages and transient currents that would occur and the susceptibility to RF uh, but mostly the IP IP uh, shifting in the GPU in any kind of microelectronic circuitry uh, most companies and especially Apple went away from the, the legs or studs that came out of the chips, uh, capacitors, you name it. Uh, so what they would do is they would put something called a thermal silver paste netted or unleaded or non netted Okay, so it was a type of thermal paste uh, and it was into little beads and uh, they would lay the chip on it and as the chip heated it up usage the co contact was established in this particular chip on the 2011 there is just no repair for it so you might as well save your money don't try to fix these they, they are not fixable believe me I've tried I've gone everywhere um one possible fix involves taking the motherboard of a completely different computer which is the 2012 the last computer that had the 17 inch size on a MacBook Pro and taking that and, in, and putting that into a 2011 however the price is prohibitive prohibiting because you can pick up a MacBook Air, um, well, it's not configurable. You can't configure that MacBook Pro anymore. Well, you kind of can, but you would break some rules that maybe you want to pick up. Okay, so this process is called reballing. Reballing does not work. So don't. If you see this board here. And you see, like the silver and the other side looks kind of toasted. Then you know it's been reballed. So you might as well toss that in the trash. It's no good. 2011 is just not a good computer. Invest nothing into them. So I'm gonna move out of this picture and move to some other pictures, which may help. Okay, and here's the culprit. The 2011 17 inch 
you know it's because it has some giant speakers over here. Fantastically sounding. Um, just a piece of garbage. And here's our a couple of things you would get. You would get these lines here, these lines here. Um, here's somebody else reballing. Um, here is um, something very interesting for you guys who are in the Mac world. Um, this is how you would change the graphics, uh, the graphics processor you're using. So you would note that because next to the uh, Wi-Fi symbol, you would get a little I, and you would turn off or turn on the graphics card that you wanted. The, the Radeon is the one that's pretty much crap. It's no sorry to say, but it's just not. And the 3000, the NVIDIA, just did, did it no favors. Just just a bad product all the way around. Um, let me see. So, um, let me see if that one's it. So this one is the actual chip itself, and that's about as good a picture as I'm gonna get. So you see, there's the Nvidia, and uh, you just okay. Here are the balls right here that I'm talking about. These are the ones that would make contact. Uh, not not any good for you. So. One thing I want you to know is here, this is a really good picture. If you see that you have memory that's blue, that's Apple, you'll note that memory made by Apple is blue. Now let me turn your attention to this side over here. And uh, you really need to take note of this. Okay, so if you do happen to have a kernel panic I need you to go to this website I am going to add this to this video at the bottom so you can look and start reading your own kernel panic reports so I'm not going to go through this because literally I would be reading it to you which you can read yourself but um, here's everything you need Everything from uh, panic line one to whatever panic it is. So, um, if I was to um, go through this really quick, here's your panic, and this is the CPU that called out the panic. So, see, in this case, CPU zero, uh, and here's uh, its address, made the kernel panic or it requested that a panic be initiated um let me see if I can go down a little bit here is the BSD process name corresponding to the current current thread okay so to make a long story short look at who made the call and in this case it's a CPU 0 now, if you do have a um, kernel panic report, you're not going to get a CPU 0. You're going to get a CPU 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, or 8. And then what you want to go do is not necessarily throw it in the trash, but you want to go to the, the BSD process or the last process that was running before the computer crashed. Okay, so in this case, you have, let me see, okay, so Mac version, let me see if I can keep going down. Okay, so that's not a good example, but it just kind of tells you the initial. So let me scroll down to one that may show that. Here go. Okay, so I um, scroll down and uh, in isolating the crash, um, you can read this portion. And um, you're looking for the K text, and that's the one that made the last call. And this one, 
look at whatever process it was that you were running at that time and you might want to uninstall it uh, sometimes there are no fixes for the GPU but that is not typically the case typically you have some software that just won't play nice so here is the KTEX node on this example so you can get that in the activity monitor and just keep going down working down and down and down and uh, find your way to the panic log which you can just open up finder and just type in panic log and it's typically in the system log folder and um, you'll find uh, this panic and it'll who called it out scroll yourself down read this I'm literally not gonna read the entire thing to you it's a uh, lengthy and I think you can read it for yourself uh, so again to highlight this go to this website which I will put in the video link and uh, you can begin to isolate your own panics on your computer.